Salam. The very undemocratic regimes of the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain were pressured into recognising apartheid Israel by the Trump regime this year, precisely to advantage the electoral campaign of Trump there. Trump had some leverage over both because in late 2018, both the UAE and Bahrain had reopened relations with Syria, and that was something which Washington was trying to prohibit and tried to do it through its 2020 Caesar law, which was imposing, intended to impose sanctions on anyone who re-established economic relations with Syria after the failure of the US war against Syria. So because both the UAE and Bahrain had been collaborating secretly with Israel for many years, um, including the assassination of Palestinian militants in, in Dubai, for example, and the kidnap of uh, whistleblowers from Israel in Dubai. Um, because of that reason, there's no real change in the forces of resistance in the region. However, it is a betrayal by those regimes of the Palestinian cause and the Arab cause. And for that reason, there has to be consequences. Uh, for those regimes. First of all, the first consequence is to publicly humiliate those regimes for what they've been pressured to do, uh, effectively exposing them as puppets of Washington, uh, publicly humiliate them, and also to uh, increase the efforts to promote democracy in those two states, in the UAE and Bahrain, because we, as we know, they're enormously popular in unpopular in both states, and there should be a regime change precisely in those collaborator states. My name is Arnold August, a journalist, author, and fellow at the Canadian Foreign Policy Institute and based here in Montreal. Canada's reaction to the accord was to say that this has been a great step forward for peace, but we in Canada ask, how can, be a, how can it represent a, a, a step towards peace when the most important ingredient was left out and that is the Palestinian people that were excluded from these negotiations. Secondly, Canada jumped on the point that the accord uh, indicates that there will be a suspension of annexation by Israel, but only a suspension and thus it can be started again when uh, the United States and their allies decide to carry out this uh, a policy uh, once again. But the point is, my friends, Canada has no mandate to speak in our names with regards to uh, Palestine or and many other issues. Do you know that the Can Canadian government under Trudeau made a bid for a seat on the United Nations Security Council earlier this year? However, the Canadian Foreign Policy Institute, pro-Palestinian organizations and other peace organizations, we carried out a major resistance within Canada as well as internationally addressing ourselves directly to governments all over the world to say no to Canada's bid for a seat on the United Nations Security Council. And guess what? Canada lost and we, the resistance in Canada, we won. We are encouraged by this. In fact, now there are some members of parliament in the Canadian parliament who are taking a stand against the Zionist policy uh, with regards to Palestine. And we're building this resistance, trying to force a change in the Canadian government's policy. And while we're doing this in Canada, allowing me to say that we fully support, unconditionally support the struggle of the Palestin Palestinian people for their self-determination against the apartheid state of Israel and the struggles of the people in the uh, Arab countries in support of the Palestinian people. Thank you very much.